Welcome back to another React video. It's been a while since I've done one of these. In this video, we're going to be creating a sortable table. So the sortable table is going to have two features. You're going to be able to sort by any column and you're going to be able to reverse the sort. So what are we going to be using? We're not going to be using any libraries. We're just going to use React and we're going to use TypeScript. If you want to implement this in a project that doesn't have TypeScript, that's okay. You'll still be able to follow along. So can you follow along if you're using a component library? Yeah, this method will work with any component library that has table elements. So if you'd like to see any more videos like this, I can make ones on table pagination or searchable tables. Let me know in the comment section below. So before we get started, this is a demonstration of what it is that we're going to be building. So you can see we have all these columns here and then we have a thousand rows of data. And then you can click the little chevron here and it's going to sort by that item. So you can see here we're sorting by ID in descending order. And then we can click the chevron again and now we're sorting in ascending order. If we click this chevron here, we're going to sort by first name in descending order. And then we can sort by these other columns here as well. This is the code that I'm starting out with. So I have these headers here and these are just headers that aligned to the data that I have in this array here. And this is just some dummy data. So you can see here we have ID, first name, last name, email, gender, and IP address. And then we have a label for each one of those columns. We have our table element here. And we have a table header. And inside the table header, we're going to render out all of our table headers from this array here. And then we're going to render out the body of our data by looping through it and rendering a table row for each item in the array. So this is what our table looks like so far. You can see we have all the columns, but you can't sort yet. So let's get started writing the code to make this table sortable. The first thing I'm going to do is to define some state properties. So I'm going to say const and open my array brackets equals use state. And we're going to have two of these. And I'm going to define my sort key. and I'm going to define my sort order. So the sort key is going to refer to the key that's in our array of items. You can see here we, our keys are ID, first name, last name, email, gender, and IP address. And then a sort order is going to be either ascending or descending. Let's add some types for these. So I'm gonna say type data, it's equal to type of, and we need to import our data so we can get the type of this data object here. So we have to import data from data.json. And then our data type is going to be type of data. Now we can use that data is type of data. You can see here, this has all of our items, our ID, first name, and their corresponding type. Next type we need is our sort keys. I'm going to say type sort keys equal to key of data. And I'm just going to use the zeroth element of data. You can see here now we have our sort keys, ID, first name, last name, etc. And then our type sort order is going to be either ascending or it's going to be descending. Let's type these up. So our sort key is going to be type of sort keys. And then our sort order is going to be type of sort order. I'm just going to add some defaults here. So I'm going to say this is default ascending. And then our sort key by default is just going to be ID. The next thing I need to do is to create a sort function. So I'm going to say const sorted data is equal to use callback. I'm going to use callback because if I pass in the same properties, I want to memoize and therefore quickly return the result of our sorting function. So I'm going to create another function up here called sort data. And actually I'm going to call this use callback implementation here sorted data. And you could just do this inside of your use callback if you like, but I prefer to separate it out into another function. 
I'm just going to return sorted data, and then we're also going to have a dependency list. So sorted data is going to take some table data, and that is just going to be our data that comes in when we render our sortable table. It's going to take a sort key, and it's going to take a reverse property. So reverse is just going to be true if sort order is equal to descending. Let's add this to our sort data. We have our table data, our sort key, and reverse. Type these up. So table data is going to be type of data. Sort key is going to be type of sort keys. And reverse is just going to be a Boolean. So we need to add some items to our use callback dependency array. So we need to add our data. We need to add our sort key. And we need to add our sort order. So for our sorted data, let's for now just return our table data. And we can use this function here by replacing our data down here, and then we can execute it because use callback is going to return a function. So this sort function here is where all the magic is going to happen. And there's lots of different ways that you can implement a sort function. I'm just going to show you how to do this in JavaScript, but you could use something like lodash.sortby, and that would be a great way to implement this sort by function. It really depends on what sort of data you want to pass into the sortable table. So first I'm just going to do a check to say if not sort key, then return table data. In our implementation here, this isn't really necessary because we have a default sort key down here and we can only change it by replacing it with another sort key, but you might not want to do that. And say const sorted data is equal to data.sort and sort takes a callback and I'm going to return a and I need to define a and b in the callback arguments and then I'm going to get a dot sort key so if our sort key is id for example this is equivalent to saying a dot id but we need this to be dynamic because we can sort by any column in our table so if a dot sort key is greater than b sort key then we want to return one otherwise we're going to return negative one so I'm going to return our sorted data. And if we have reverse, then I'm going to return sorted data dot reverse. And reverse is a method that you can call on arrays. So this is our sort function implemented. I'm going to split my window here so we can test out our sort. And we can test it out by changing the default key inside of sort key. So I'm going to change this to first name. And you can see here it's sorting by first name. Let's change it to last name. And you can see it's sorting by last name. We want to be able to click these columns and it have it sorted. Let's define a button that the user can click to sort the data. So I'm going to say function sort button. And I'm going to return a button element. And inside the button element, I'm just going to render this little chevron thing. So our sort button is going to take a few arguments. We're going to take the sort order, the column key, the sort key, and an onClick handler. Type up these inputs. So our sort order is going to be of type sort order. Column key is going to be type of sort key. Our sort key is going to be type of sort keys. And then our on click is going to be a mouse event handler. 
And this is a generic that's going to take a HTML button element. So now when we map through our headers, let's also render our sort button. And the column key is going to be equal to our row dot key. The on click handler is going to be equal to a function that calls another function called change sort. And we're going to pass in our row key. So we need to define change sort function change sort. And we also need to pass in the sort order and sort key. If you have a few properties that you want to pass in and you just want to pass them in with their given name, you can use this little trick. So you can open up some curly brackets and then you can spread another object and we can say sort order and sort key. So this would be equivalent to saying sort order is equal to sort order. And then the same with sort key is equal to sort key. So TypeScript is yelling at us here and we can fix this by typing up our header. So you can see here key is a string, but it should be type of sort key. Let's say that we have an object and our key is going to be type of sort keys. And then our label is just going to be a string and we have an array of these objects. And so change sort is going to take a key and that's going to be type of sort keys. So when change sort gets called, we need to set our sort key and our sort order. Let's say set sort order. And for sort order, we just want to flip the value. So if it's currently ascending, then we want to make it descending. And if it's currently descending, we want to make it ascending. So we can say sort order is equal to ascending. Then we want to make it descending. Otherwise, we want to make it ascending. So if you only want to change the sort order when they click the column for a second time, you can check that the key that it's being changed to is the currently set key. So you can just wrap this in a if key is equal to sort key, then change this sort order here. But I'm going to change it every time they click a column. And then we just need to say set sort key to our key. So if we click our toggles here, you can see it does nothing. And the reason for that is because we haven't added our on click handler to the sort button. So I'm just going to say on click equal to on click. Let's click these and you can see it's sorting these columns now. So we want to be able to rotate the button if the current column is in reverse order. So I'm going to do that with CSS. So I'm going to say class name is equal to, and then I'm going to add a conditional here. So I'm going to use some back ticks, and then I'm going to open some templating strings. And I'm going to say sort key is equal to column key, and sort order is equal to descending. Then we want to add a class called sort button and sort reverse. Otherwise, we just want to add a class called sort button. Let's go inspect the element here. So you can see our ID button has a class of sort button. And then if we click it, it gets a class of sort reverse. And then we can click it again and that class goes away. So let's go add the CSS for this sort reverse class. I'm going to come into app.css. I'm going to add some styles for the sort button. So I'm just going to make its background color transparent, its border none. I'm going to give it some padding, remove the margin, give it a line height of one, give it a font size of 15 pixels, make it black and the cursor pointer. Now for sort reverse, I'm going to give this a transform property. And then I'm going to say rotate and I want to rotate this 180 degrees. 
And now let's click this button and you can see it rotates 180 degrees, but it feels pretty gross. So let's give this a transition. So I'm going to say transition. And then I want to transition the transform. And I want to do it over half a second. And I want it to ease out. Try this again. And you can see our little buttons here animate nicely. And it only rotates for the one that's currently sorted. And the direction represents if it's ascending or descending. So that is how to make a table sortable in React. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.